Morning, I'm John Thielen. Today on Fish Head, we're gonna go out and chase some spring walleyes. And, and I'll tell you what, this is a little bit different spring than a lot of springs we've seen. All of a sudden, we've got fish moving a lot earlier, but what we've had to do is follow a progression to get to where we're at and get on these fish today. And we'll explain exactly how we did that today so that you can do it on your next outing too. Stay right where you're at, it's gonna be a good one. Got him that time. <laughs> Second time's a charm. A pretty decent one too. Yeah. You know, a lot of times you start fishing these structures like what we're fishing here today, early like we are. We're, we're, you look around, we're by ourselves out here. There's one other boat down in here, but most everybody's fishing shorelines. And we're out here because ultimately we're looking for fish that have left those shorelines and we're trying to be the first ones to get them on that first bit of structure but one of the things you got to remember about walleyes is in the spring they move more than they're going to move all year long you'll have fish move into spawn and then when they're done spawning a lot of times they'll get out of there real quick so what you want to do is understand that you got to keep moving with them to stay on top of bites but the, there's so many factors that go into how fast they move and we're going to talk a little bit about those today because all said and done, if you can keep up with them, you can catch them. And you know, one of the neat things too is a lot of times it's those big females that move first. And Mike's got a pretty good one here. And I would say that's because we got one of those bigger females that just got done spawning. And slid out here a little bit deeper. Oh, they got some shoulder. Oh, that's yeah, a nice fish. That's yeah. a big fish. Look at that. Look at that one. What a way to start a day right there. I'm gonna let you go ahead and grab that big fish, Mike. That is okay. awesome fish. Look at that. That's what you can do when you get ahead of the movement of fish. Because the first fish you get to these deeper structures like we're on today are always the bigger females. Those males, those little ones, those 15 inch eaters that you're off after so often on opener and such, they're all still in there shallow, but big fish like that one, they're out here deep already. Wow, look at that. That is a pile of fish right there. That looks like a double waiting to happen right there. Well, perfect. Okay. And you went down, John. Did I? Okay, perfect. That's what I like, huh? Nothing worse than what I'm doing right here. All that line out. Spit it. Got him? Yep. There you go. Boy, that was one of them times where we got a little bit lucky. <laughs> you know, we dropped on that fish and I was just going up and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using the trolling motor to park us on a spot. And uh, that was one of those times where, boy, did I have a lot of slack. I went to the front here. <laughs> oh, and John's catching this fish. Let me tell you exactly what we're using. Um, brand new Lindy jig, uh, 16th ounce live bait jig, double uh, XL Pro Series. And, and we use these a lot, um, one of the greatest tactics. But let me tell you why we're using it. Water's cold, we're at 51 degrees now in the afternoon, and it's a very slow presentation. Most, for the most part, we're having to sit on these fish for a long time and let them stare our stuff down to, to get bit. That's a nice fish, John, yeah. good one. Yeah, we'll take him if we can, if we can finish the deal here. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a real slow presentation and just trying to, trying to force feed these fish. Yeah, you know what? This is uh, this time of year when you're when you're looking at fish that are not aggressive yet. But then again, too, look how that one ate it. I mean, he took it all the way down. You got one? Oh, there we go. There you go. But you know, when you're looking at at fish that are not aggressive yet, and they're not going to get super aggressive until this water warms up. Fish like that one right there, he'll he'll eat. But boy, you gotta talk him into eating because he doesn't need to run around eating like crazy yet. The water's not warm enough for him to have to worry about that. Let me let me let this guy get back in the water. Then I'm gonna show you this jig we're using because it's making a huge, huge difference today. And it's a brand new one. There we go. 
Man, that's so cool. You know, we're, we're on a really clear water lake today too, and you can see those fish go down so far. I think that's so neat when you're letting the fish go and, and they can swim down and you can see them forever. But here's what it is right here. This is the all new Lindy Live Bait Jig. And what we did is we created a jig that works for minnows, it works for leeches, whatever it is. And you see it's got that short shank hook on it. And what that allows you to do is really so you really get that live bait on there close to the jig head. And I think that can make a huge, huge difference because there's days where you're using a standard jig where that bait's too far away from that jig head. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't look natural down there. The other really neat thing about this brand new jig is you're able to jig this thing. You can drift it. You can do all these different things, or you can do what we're doing today and just put it underneath the slip bobber. Comes in a whole bunch of different colors, great colors. You know, what we did is we just chose the best colors out there. And then the other thing is it's available in three sizes. Today we're using a 16th, but you can also get this thing in an eighth and a quarter. So all said and done, this brand new Lindy Live Bait Jig's got you covered no matter how you're fishing, whether you're actually jigging, whether you're pitching, whether you're bobber fishing like we are today or whatever it may be. I'll tell you what, that's fun to catch fish like that. I don't, I don't care where you're at or what you're doing or what time of the year it is. That's a fun fish to catch anywhere you go. Let's find us another one and get another one, huh? There I go again. Look at that. Got him. All right. Now it just goes to show you, there wasn't a lot there on the screen that, no. that we threw on. But one of the things that happens when you're fishing these spots like we are right now is so often there's not a lot of fish here yet. So you got to do a lot of moving like we're doing just to come across the fish that you can get to bite. And if you don't keep moving, here's what happens. You can sit on a spot for a long, long time that doesn't have any fish on it. So all we're doing is we're driving around and we're continually looking for a fish or two because what's happened is these fish are slowly filtering out here and that's all based on water temps. One of the things that happens is when you look at water temps, so often that opening weekend in Minnesota, Wisconsin, across the Dakotas, you know, in that, in that mid-May time frame, you're dealing with water temps in the 40s. And a lot of times it's those mid 40s, but boy, there's a magical thing that happens somewhere right around 50. And that is the first wave of fish really starts moving in earnest and they kind of scatter out on any structures they can find. So I really base a lot of this on water temps. And what's happened here is we're just into that temperature swing where they're just starting to move. And what's gonna happen now is if we can catch fish consistently all day today, We'll get them all day again here tomorrow. And here's why. There's only gonna be more coming and they'll stack up on these first sets of structures. And that's great proof because the first fish we caught today was a big female. Right. Well, that was a male. So what's happening now is we're starting to see some of those males leave the spawning grounds, but the water temps have just hit that number. So really keep that in mind. You know, when you're looking at those mid forties, you're probably gonna wanna stay put on those shorelines where they spawned. As soon as you get into those fifties though, what happens is those fish start their move and that's when you can intercept them out here. And again, man, you can have them all to yourself. I mean, there's nobody around. Nobody. <laughs> this is just about as perfect as it can get. Let's get them back in. We'll see if we can find another one here. Got him. Right. That looks like pretty decent fish, huh? Not bad. <laughs> you know, we made one adjustment here too. We moved a little bit, just moved in just a little bit. And one of the things that I'm a big, big believer in, and this is happening really fast here now all of a sudden, but when you get on a spot that you see a few fish at this time of the year, Fish it and give it a little bit of time because usually there's a fair amount of fish there. You just saw one or two when you came in. And when these fish move at this time of the year, they move in groups. And that's what's going on here. You look at this. That last fish I got, that was a good one. This is another really nice fish. And what's happening is these fish, they're just moving in groups. So what we're gonna be able to do now, is we're gonna be able to really dissect this spot and get after these fish because ultimately, I'll bet you there's 30, 40 more of these fish all around this edge, and you can just catch them one after another. Get out and do some of this. Get out and spend a little bit of time fishing a little bit deeper, a little bit ahead of those fish early in the year, and what you're gonna find out is not only are you gonna get a whole bunch of really nice ones, but you can get on fish and you can fish all by yourself and just have a ball because you know what? You're finding something that's all your own, and as far as I'm concerned, that's one of the funnest parts of fishing.